In the name of God, amen. Please be seated. My name is Bishop Marianne Buddy, and on behalf of all of us gathered here, heartfelt thanks to Justice O'Connor's family for the gift of gathering us in remembrance and thanksgiving for one you loved so well and by whom you were deeply loved. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chief Justice, for your tributes, for Mr. Thomas, not only for your words here, but your insightful biography of Justice O'Connor, and to you, Mr. O'Connor, for speaking so vividly and poignantly about your mother. To the readers and musicians, those offering prayers, what a holy moment this is, and we are blessed to be a part of it. When someone so loved and admired and from whom we have learned so much dies, we, we face the reality of death. So let me say this. Having lived my vocation for over 30 years, having been at the bedside of many who have breathed their last, I am persuaded that God's mercy and love meet us when we cross over from this life to whatever awaits us beyond it. I can't say much more about the mysteries of death, but about God's love, I am sure. And in that confidence, I speak to you today. And isn't it also true, at the threshold of death, we can't help but ponder the mystery of life, and not life in the abstract but the one wild and precious life that was Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. One of my teachers liked to remind us that what we say, what any of us say about anyone else, reveals as much about us as the one whom we, of whom we speak. And that was certainly the case in the year 2008 when Justice O'Connor returned to her beloved alma mater to deliver the inaugural speech for what would become an annual event honoring the renowned Stanford Law professor, Harry Rathbun, who had inspired her to study law. And as with your tributes to Justice O'Connor today, what she said about Professor Rathburn offered insight into her soul and her sense of vocation. Rathburn, she said, was the first person ever to speak in my presence of how an individual can make a difference, how a single caring person can effectively determine the course of events. I had not heard that before, really, and he put it in such a persuasive way that I think most of us came to believe it might be true and to take seriously the notion that we could make a difference. Few people have taken as seriously as she the conviction that a single caring person can help de determine the course of events. But as evidence today, and in the scores of remembrances since her death, she not only lived by that conviction, she inspired it in others. She cared deeply for those in her orbit, and she invested in them the way Rathburn had invested in her. Now, in that same speech, she quoted a poem by Rudyard Kipling that Rathburn often cited. And in it, we can hear the life philosophy that guided her in, in the courtroom and in life. They're good words for us all. If, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when others doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, 
If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of a distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And what's more, you'll be a man, my son. Justice O'Connor had no interest in being a man. But she didn't feel herself excluded from Kipling's wisdom, and she resolved to live by it. And doing so, she walked through doors previously reserved for men and kept them open for those of us who followed. Preparation for today, I've found myself pondering the arc of long lives, the evolution and transformation of life that occurs over decades and the essence of a person that remains constant over time. For we pay homage to the entirety of Justice O'Connor's life from her childhood at the Lazy Bee and her final years as she succumbed to the same disease that afflicted her husband, John. And few of us know, actually, what it cost Justice Sandra Day O'Connor to live her life in her seasons of greatest strength and joy, she seemed invincible, the most powerful woman in Washington. Yet we know that the arc of any life is never a straight line, and hers was no exception. As the Franciscan theologian Richard Rohr writes, life, as the biblical tradition makes clear, is both loss and renewal, death and resurrection, chaos, and the healing of it at the same time. Life can seem to be a collision of opposites. Faith, at its core, is an abiding trust in an underlying life force so strong that it includes even death. Another woman pioneer of the law, Polly Murray, was born 20 years before Justice O'Connor on the other side of the country and on the other side of the racial divide. Well acquainted with racial discrimination, Murray was stunned to discover when she enrolled at Howard University Law School that gender discrimination was as large, if not a larger hurdle for her than race and she dedicated her life to ending what she dubbed as Jane Crow. And Murray lived to see Justice O'Connor named to the highest court in the land. And shortly before her death in 1985, Murray said, I've lived long enough to see many of my lost causes found. You see, Justice O'Connor wasn't only an inspiration for those who came after her, she was the realization of what generations of women before her struggled in their respective realms to accomplish. And there's a particular responsibility that comes with being first, not just to the future, but to the past. And she held that space with such grace and dignity, recognizing the power and the importance of standing in that gap between dreams denied and dreams realized. And she also lived long enough to see some of her influence wane. And she had to make her peace with that too, which is not easy. And when she recited Kipling's words at Stanford in 2008, I wonder if those realities were as much in her mind as the challenges of her more active years. 
But what all of us in this cathedral over the age of 60 know, and some learn it earlier, is that such losses are universal. We live and we work and we strive to make our contributions and we simply do not know which of our accomplishments, if any, will endure. Some will, others will not. The pendulum of humanity swings in ways we cannot predict or control. And so we occupy our time, our place in time, and in the ebb and flow of humanity's story, doing all that we can while we can until the time comes when we must let go all at once or in stages. And there is nothing more difficult than letting go. But that too is a part of the mystery of life, what it means to be human. All the more poignant for those like Justice O'Connor and so many of you gathered to honor her whose vocations are played out in the most influential of arenas. So I leave you with words of one who also knew the gift and the cost of a long life dedicated to public service, the 20th century, the 20th century theologian Reinhold Niebuhr. And he said this, there's nothing worth doing that can be accomplished in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by love. And no virtuous act is quite as virtuous from the standpoint of our friend or foe as it is from our standpoint. Therefore, we must be saved by the final form of love, which is forgiveness. As we commend to God the wild and precious life of Justice Sandra Ray O'Connor and entrust to her, to that God of faith, hope, love, and forgiveness, may you live by the same the same hope, the same faith, the same love, the same forgiveness now in the wild and precious life that is yours and in the service that is still yours to give.